happy morning dear students welcome to science online class in our previous sessions we have seen chapter 1 in biology biology the science of life in today's session we are going to revise the first chapter in chemistry what is chemistry about so i hope most of you would have bought your notebooks by now and you are already writing in your class book notebook so once you finish watching this session you can all you can complete your class book notebook neatly so students in this lesson we are going to revise first what is chemistry and then how chemistry evolved and about the founding fathers of modern chemistry so the founding fathers are the pioneers okay they are the pioneers of modern chemistry so what is chemistry chemistry is the branch of science that deals with the study of substance and their transformation so chemistry is the science that studies the substance and their transformation so the substances are kind of matter of which a object is made up of that means everything around us is made up of uh, matter isn't it children so whatever things you can see around us okay for example a pencil or a pen maybe the scale or a book or a mobile the water the air around us everything is made up of matter then what is matter matter is anything that occupies space and has mass so any object we see around us which occupies a space for example this uh, air freshness this dio uh, spray bottle it occupies when i keep it in a surface it occupies a space so we call this as a matter and it also has the some mass so any object or anything that occupies some space and it has a mass then we call it as matter so what is substance substance is the kind of matter of which a thing is made up of for example you can think of this scale okay the scale is also a matter then what is substance what kind of matter the scale is made up of is called the substance so if the scale is made up of a plastic then we say this is a plastic scale so what is substance substance is the kind of matter of which a object is made up of so in case of water ice water and water vapor here ice is made up of substance water water liquid in the liquid form it is made up of substance water that is h2o water and vapor is also made up of the substance water so in all these things we can see that the substance is water but when you take the scale here the scale is made up of plastic you can see this uh, this uh, deodorant uh, bottle it is made up of some other substance so in these things the, they are made up of different substance whereas in ice water and water vapor they are all made up of the same kind of substance that is water okay so what you have to remember in substance is substance is the kind of matter of which a thing is made up of so the things can be made up of same substance okay like ice water what vapor everything substance is the same but some things they are made up of different kind of substances also so next let's see what are transformation so what are transformation transformation means change so change happens everywhere every moment around us and there are two type of changes the first one is physical change whereas the second one is called as chemical change so first let's revise about the physical change so what is physical change when a physical change happens there is no change in the substance involved in it whereas in a chemical change there are change happening in the substance so the common example of physical change is so when ice melts to water or when water evaporates to vapor we, in all these changes the substance is still the water so there is no 
change in substance substance remains water in all these changes whereas in a chemical change the common example is burning so when we burn a paper or wood what happens is the paper and wood is made up of a substance called as cellulose okay cellulose is the component of paper and wood so when we burn when we burn paper or wood the cellulose will combine with the oxygen from the air to form carbon dioxide and water so you can see in a chemical change new substances are formed whereas in a physical change no new substances are formed so in every all the change all the case the uh, water is the only substance there but here it is not so new substances are formed in this chemical chain so when we burn sulfur or we when we burn uh, carbon carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide is formed so in the chemical change new substances are formed and the older substances are transformed into a changed into a new substance so what you have to remember is in the physical change the new substances are not formed there is no change in substance but in a chemical change new substances are form are formed and there are changes in the substance so in today's uh, class we are going to learn more about how chemistry evolved and founding fathers of modern chemistry students you can listen to the video till the end so that you can learn the you can revise the entire lesson and also you will get few um, instruction regarding the important uh, questions in this children are you all with me you can turn your books to page number 1 what is chemistry about and you can have a pencil in your hand to underline the important terminologies so we have seen that chemistry is the study of substances and the transformation we have learned what is matter anything that takes up space and has mass is matter and we know what is substance substance is nothing but the kind of matter and coming on to transformation so we know in a physical change there is no change in substance but in a chemical change the substance changes we have discussed about the examples of physical as well as the chemical change children in your exam point of view you must know to define chemistry and to define matter and you must know the difference between the physical and the chemical change you must be able to give example of each type of change so we'll move on to the second page now when there is a chemical change in a substance we say a chemical reaction takes place so what is chemical reaction when there is a chemical change happening in a substance then we say that a chemical reaction has happened so when carbon sulfur and cellulose burn chemical reactions takes place so not only these many chemical reactions happens in our day to day life like during cooking of meal or during digestion of food in our body or the growth of plants and animals everything involves lot of chemical reactions in them and the substance which is formed at the formed in a chemical reaction or the substance which is used in a chemical reaction it is called as chemical so you can underline what is chemical a substance formed by or used in a chemical reaction is called a chemical next let's see how chemistry evolved human beings have continuously made efforts to lead a better life so we all wanted to live a better more sophisticated or more luxurious life so they have looked for ways to improve the quality and yield of agricultural products so we have searched for many methods to improve the quality and the yield okay the yield of agricultural products so not only this we have searched for ways to improve our clothing and building materials as well so chemistry began to evolve in all these aspects so the start of christian era in egypt is the beginning of chemistry that is when alchemy 
begun. The Egyptians were good at working with metals, glasses and dyes. At the same time, even Indians worked with metals, especially iron. And we even prepared medicines from herbs and the minerals. So, that is what we call as Ayurveda or Siddha. All these forms of medicines were not like newly invented now. But they were all the ancient method of medicine. So, before modern chemistry, there was alchemy. The word alchemy was derived by the Arabs from the Greek Egyptian word called as chemia. So, chemia means black or Egypt. And alchemy was practiced by the Arabic people and Greeks and Egyptians between 8th and 16th century AD. And these alchemists had two main aims. One is converting the cheaper metal into gold and second one is to search for the elixir of life. In the olden days, gold has been greatly valued by the human beings. So, alchemists want to convert the baser. Baser means the cheaper or the inexpensive metals like iron and copper into gold. So, they even tried for many centuries and they told that we succeeded because they found something called as philosopher stone. But later all their claims were proved false because the alchemist failed because their attempts were not scientifically proved because they were not able to prove their experiments scientifically. And it is impossible to convert one metal into another metal. And the second aim of the alchemist was searching for the elixir of life. So what is elixir of life and why do the alchemists wanted to search for this elixir of life? Elixir of life is a imaginary liquid, okay, just an imaginary liquid. But they believe that this liquid can cure all the disease and a, pe a person can live long when they, eat, when they consume or when they drink the, drink the liquid. And alchemists even believe that uh, the elixir of life would make a person immortal. Okay, immortal means we can live, uh, live endless, okay, for eternity without facing death. But all their experiments were unsuccessful, so the alchemy failed. Important reason for the failure of alchemy is the alchemist believed that everything is made up of four substances, earth, fire, air and water and no substance could be simpler than these four. So they told that only the fire, air, water and earth are the four simpler form of substance and they named these four substances as elements and they call, gave this uh, theory a name called as four element theory. But from 17th century onwards, the scientists began to discover many substances which are simpler than these four substances that is earth, fire, air and water. So, the four element theory was also disproved and this was the origin of modern chemistry. After 18th century, many new discoveries happened. It was when Lavoisier proved that water is made up of simpler substance called hydrogen and oxygen and he told water is a, not an element, water is a compound and oxygen was prepared by Priestley and um, Oil prepared hydrogen and Lavoisier also identified oxygen and hydrogen. So, so many discoveries happened in during this time of 18th century and several elements were discovered and around 115 elements were, were discovered during this time. Students, you must remember about element and compound we have studied last year. So, you must know what is an element, what is a compound first. Element is made up of same kind of atoms whereas a compound is formed by different kind of atoms. So that's why we say water is a compound because it is made up of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen whereas hydrogen is a element because it is made up of only hydrogen atom. After 19th century what happened is 
they began to classify the elements and there was a scientist his name was mendeley he succeeded in classifying the elements into a table and he called this table as the periodic table of elements so students some questions which are important in your exam point of view are you must know the two aims of alchemy which is very important and then you must know the the discoveries by different scientists moving on to the next page page number 4 the concept of the atom and the molecules okay in 1803 dalton gave the concept of atom so dalton was first to tell about the atom so he told that the smallest part of an element is made up of atoms so he told that atom is the smallest part of an element and he also said that atoms of an element are all alike alike means same but the atoms of different elements are different so he told atoms of element are same whereas atoms of different element they are different and he also gave a theory called as atomic theory children you must also know to differentiate the molecule of a element and the molecule of a compound so atom combined with atoms of the same element to form molecule of the element which means so atom will combine with another atom of the same element to form molecule of element for example one atom of hydrogen combined with another atom of hydrogen to form a molecule of element hydrogen and one atom of oxygen combined with another atom of oxygen to form the molecule of a element oxygen so, so similarly when atoms of different elements combine together what is formed is a molecule of a compound so atoms of same element combine together to form element whereas atoms of different elements combine together to form molecule of a compound then water is the example for compound next we'll move on to the founding fathers of modern chemistry so we have learned how modern chemistry evolved okay so now we'll be discussing about the contributions of various scientists towards modern chemistry students since we have completed this chapter already and we have learned in detail about each of these scientists now i'll just revise about the founding fathers of modern chemistry robert boyle okay robert boyle was born to a noble family in 25th january 1627 in ireland and some of his important and valuable contribution towards modern chemistry is was the first scientist to prepare a substance simpler than water so which was later established to be hydrogen so boyle was the first one to prepare hydrogen and he rejected aristotle theory that water is an element and from then the modern chemistry evolved he also studied the behavior of gases and he gave a law called as boyle's law and he wrote more than 20 books did lots of researches in various subjects like physics chemistry oceanography gemology blood science and so on and one of his book the skeptical chemist which means the doubtful chemist is a very famous one and robert boyle died on 31st december 1691 next let's move on to antoine lavoisier so antoine lavoisier was born to a wealthy family in paris in 26th of august some of his important and the valuable contributions are he changed the nature of subject from a qualitative analysis okay a qualitative type to a quantitative type students you know the difference between quantity and quality and lavoisier's observations were mostly quantitative in nature because he took in account the quantity of hydrogen and oxygen which combines to form water so he proved that by weight okay by weight or by quantity one part of hydrogen react with eight part of oxygen to form nine parts of water this is how he proved that by 
taking in account the weight of the substance elements he proved that hydrogen and oxygen are simpler substances of which water is made so water is not a element but water is a compound so because of this contribution he was considered as the father of modern chemistry and many many other contributions like he identified hydrogen and oxygen and he proved that substances burn only in the presence of oxygen suggested the metric system and he established that sulfur is an element not a compound and he uh, predicted the existence of silicon and he suggested that matter may change its form and shape but matter cannot change its mass so all these were some of the contribution of lavoisier towards modern chemistry and the contribution of lavoisier towards uh, ke modern chemistry is a very important question and you must know how he disproved okay how he disproved the greeks four element theory by using the quantitative method of analysis let's see about john dalton john dalton was born in england and some of his important contributions and uh, contributions are he gave the atomic theory he also gave a law of chemical combination the law of multiple proportion he studied about the composition and pressure of gases then he gave a law about the pressure of gas so all these laws you will be learning in your higher classes so no need to worry but just remember what law which law he gave so he also gave a theory on color blindness and he wrote a large number of research papers he suffered stroke for three times and finally he died people well, okay it is very remarkable one because more than 40000 people came to manchester to pay their last respect to this departed genius genius okay, rob john dalton was really a genius because his contribution to modern chemistry is enormous okay students next let's move to mendeleev okay mendeleev was born in a village in siberia the important contribution of mendeleev was mendeleev put forward put forward a law called as periodic law and he classified the elements based on this law and he classified the elements in a table called as the periodic table of elements and he revised this table again in 1871 so he kept the dissimilar elements apart and he kept the similar elements in a group or column so this is how he classified the elements in the periodic table and he also predicted the existence of three new elements like scandium gallium and germanium he studied the origin of petrol and he established the first oil refinery in russia and he studied about the liquids how they expand when we heat it and he gave many laws regarding the behavior of a liquid and he uh, introduced the metric system he was one of the founder of russian chemical so society and he was even awarded the famous devi and copley medal by the royal society of london so in order to honor his contribution to chemistry the element placed in the 101st house of the periodic table is called as mendelevium okay this element is named after the scientist mendelevium so students to summarize chemistry is the science of substances and their transformation anything that occupies space and has mass is called matter and a substance does not change in physical change but it changes in chemical change alchemist focused on two main aim that is converting baser metal into gold and searching for the elixir of life however they fail and alchemist believed in old greek theory that everything is made of four elements earth water air and fire in 17th century robert boyle prepared a gas which was later identified as hydrogen 18th century lavoisier identified hydrogen and lavoisier proved that hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water so water is not a element he disproved the four element theory and number of elements were gradually disco discovered and when their numbers became large mendeleev classified them and presented the periodic table 
students we have revised chapter 1 in chemistry now let's have a look at the common laboratory apparatus okay the first one is the flat bottomed flask named so because it has a flat bottom the other one is the conical flask which is in conical a uh, shape of a cone next one is the beaker conical funnel the test tube basin test tube holder test tube stand wire gauze bunsen burner watch glass tripod stand porcelain crucible all these are some of the common apparatus we use in the chemistry lab so children i believe most of you would have understood this lesson you can at least read the lesson once and learn the important key points from your lesson and understand the concept properly children then you can copy down the notes in your class work so if you are not able to finish by today you can very well submit it tomorrow but no one should delay it beyond tomorrow everyone must finish it by friday how much ever you have completed you can post it in whatsapp group today and children don't forget to learn the full lesson okay you should not learn only the book back question answers and the exercise you must learn the entire lesson and you can complete the book back exercise by yourself send you the answers book back exercise answers by today evening so that you can counter check with your answers and you can make the corrections in your book okay children write neatly learn your chemistry chapter 1 students can note down the assignment for today's session complete the book exercise in page number 10 you can write in pencil and copy down lesson 1 notes in your class work no need to write down the book exercise in your class work and you can you have to learn the full lesson thank you children have a nice day